Hello everyone, let's worship. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in the Holy Word. I put my hope in the Holy Word. I have a living hope. I have a future. God has a plan for me. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Your love is faithful. Your love is faithful. Mighty in power. Mighty in power. God will deliver me. Of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I know I can stand secure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I put my hope in your holy word, I put my hope in your holy word, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I know I can stand secure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. 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 Yeah. 
Good morning, brothers and sisters. To all our affiliated ICOC churches here and abroad, and also to all our families and friends who are joining us and watching, thank you for tuning in to our online Sunday service. I hope we're all ready to hear God's message. One prominent theme in the whole Bible is worship. Now, worship and trusting in God, they always go together. When we trust God, we inevitably end up in praises and thanksgiving, and eventually we will see ourselves worshiping. While we experience unexpected hardships in our lives today, it is crucial that we continue to trust in Him and to worship God as the Bible encourages. Malaki po kasi ang kapakinabangang dulot nito, hindi lamang po sa ating pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay, pero lalong-lalo na po sa ating pong mga kaluluwa. So I want to read a passage in the Bible, particularly in the book of Psalms. This is a psalm really close to my heart. Reading in Psalm 46.10, it says there, He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. May kita po natin dito ang isang napakasimpleng pananalita mula po sa ating Panginoon Diyos. Yet also a very inviting statement of our God to know Him, to worship Him, and to journey with a deep sense of trust in Him. Now, to be still doesn't literally mean to do nothing. It is simply an invitation for us to cease from any humanistic action and during times like these, to just leave it all up to God. It also means that He is ever-present. And by this, He says, I will be known and acknowledged by all nations in all the earth. Hindi po lingid sa kaalaman nating lahat na sa kapanahonan po nating ito ay puno po ang ating kapaligiran ng napakaraming pagsubok. Pero bilang mga pinili, napakalaki po ng ating advantage. Hatid sa atin ito ng ating relasyon sa ating Diyos, gayon na din po ng kanya po mga pangako na ang layon ay kabutihan para po sa atin. Kaya po kahit mahirap, kahit challenging, tiyak po na tayo makapagpapatuloy. At all times, God will make Himself known. So let's be still and listen and respond to Him. I want to welcome each and every one of us to the International Churches of Christ Philippines Online Worship Service. Ngayon pong umaga, tayo po ay magdiwang at makinig po ng kanyang mga salita. To lead us in the time of giving and offering, makakasama po natin ang ating kapatid na si Russell Reyes, a brother and a missionary all the way from Ormoc City, Leyte. Pagkatapos po nun, at bago po ang ating komunyon, ay madidinig naman po natin ang ating kapatid na si Kuya Danny Kabadsan from ICOC Cebu for our main message. As we start, brothers and sisters, let's all bow down our heads and let's pray. Father God, truly, we are so encouraged at this time. We are so hopeful and thankful because we know that you are the one who will make things better for our life. Thank you for your invitation because at this moment, we know that you are moving powerfully and effectively in our individual lives and as a nation. With you, we are secure. With your promises, we can move forward. And because of that, we're grateful. God, we're so grateful for this time. Please bless our time of learning. Please bless our service. And please bless your word. All these things we ask and pray to remind Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat mga kapatid mula sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas. My name is Russell and I'm happily serving sa Pope Polo in Philippines in the last 15 years. I am also deeply humbled to help lead the church here in Ormoc City with my wife Alma. I want to take this opportunity as well para mapasalamatan po kayong lahat sa naging tulong niyo po upang suportahan ang mission natin sa Hope Worldwide Philippines. Last week, 
we were able to collect monetary support to help out our programs and services for the abused children. Diyan po sa Center of Hope sa Laguna. In, on behalf po ng Hope Worldwide Philippines, maraming maraming salamat po. Ngayong umaga, sa offering po natin, ito po ay uh, makakatulong ng higit para sa pangangailangan po ng ating mga local churches sa Pilipinas. Kahit na po tayo ay naka-lockdown ngayon, hindi po kailanman dapat natin may lockdown din yung ating mga puso at bulsa para magbigay at tumulong. Buksan po natin ang ating mga Biblia dito sa Marcos chapter 12 verses 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12 verses 41 through 44. Let's read mga kapatid. Verse 41, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people throw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has, has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. It's a nice story mga kapatid. Lahat po tayo dito ay pamilyar sa story ito. Pero kagaya po ni Jesus, ang isa po sa nagpaantig ng aking uh, puso ay yung hindi pangkaraniyo ang tugon ng poor widow sa kwento ito. I want to share two points para sa ating pagbibigay ngayong umaga. Point number one, we have to have a mindset to give than to receive. Have a mindset to give than to receive. Normally po, di ba, na dapat ang tinutulungan natin yung mga taong naghihirap, kagaya po ng uh, widow na ito, ngunit baligtad po ang nangyari sa sitwasyong ito. Ang poor widow na supposedly siya po yung tatanggap ng tulong, siya po ang nagbigay ng kanyang puso. Have a mindset to give than to receive. Point number two po natin, Trust God to supply all our needs. Trust God to supply all our needs. Tandaan po natin, hindi po wants, kundi yung mga needs po natin. At makakaasa po tayo na kapag nagtiwala po tayo sa Panginoon, Siya po ang sasagot sa atin. He will supply all our needs. Kagaya po ng kwento ng abyuda, ang key factor po, ay yung pagtitiwala sa Diyos na ibigay po ang kinabukasan sa Kanya, yung security po natin, ibigay po natin sa Panginoong Yesus. As we give, my brothers and sisters, at yung mga friends po natin na nag-join sa worship natin today, let's have a mindset to give than to receive. Let's trust God that He will supply all our needs. Tayo po ay manalangin para sa ating pagbibigay. Panginoon namin, maraming salamat po sa napakagandang uh, privilegio na binigay mo po sa amin upang makapagbigay. That out of our needs, Panginoon, tulungan niyo po yung aming mga puso na i-open ito para lalo po kami magmahal sa kapwa po namin at mapatunayang mahal na mahal po namin kayo sa pamamagitan ng aming pagbibigay. Naniniwala po kami na able po kayo to supply all our needs. Ipinagkakatiwala po namin sa inyo yung aming security. May this offering be a pleasing aroma to you, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong tiwala sa amin. Thank you so much and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Church. I hope that you guys are enjoying the singing. Maraming salamat, Edwin at K. Russell, uh, for sharing your hearts. I am so grateful that we can gather together once again, virtually, so we can worship our God. Tanong ko lang po, ano ba ang pinakamahirap na pinagdaanan natin at posible pagdaanan pa natin sa mga panahong ito? Staying home, kasamang ating mga pamilya, ang magutom, 
ang mawala ng trabaho ay kabubuhay o magkasabit, magkasakit ng COVID-19 o ang kamatayan na sanhi ng virus. Nakita po natin sa mga uh, pahayagan sa news kung, pa, kung gaano kahirap ang mga pinagdadaanan ng pasyente at maging ang kanilang mapa, mga pamilya. Tipong hindi sila makadamay o maraming matinding kalungkutan o pagdadalamhati ang kanilang nararanasan. Alam niyo po, this past few you know, months, over 2 million already as of today, over 2 million contracted the virus worldwide and caused us 135,000 people died. Sa Pilipinas lang po, close to 6,000 contracted the virus at meron po tayong naitalang 400 deaths already. Hanggang kailan po ba patatapos ang lahat ng ito? Hindi ko po alam. Maging ang ating kinaukulan, wala rin po silang alam. Pero ang alam ko po, sa panahong ito, pwede po tayong humugot ng lakas sa ating Panginoon. My message this morning will be taken from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 11 to 37. Ito po ay story ni Elisha at yung faith ng Shunammite woman na yung kanyang pong anak ay na-resurrect. Basahin po natin, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 11 to 26. The Bible says, One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, You have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, She has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, Call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. About this next time, about this time next year, rather. Elisha said, You will hold the son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mis mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year about this, that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. The child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. He said to his father, My head, my head. His father told the servant, Carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today, he asked. It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. That's all right, she said. She saluted the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant, Gehazi, look, there's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. You know, when we look at the story, the Bible says this woman, the Shunammite woman, was described as a well-to-do woman. She's well off. Not only that she's well off, she's also has a generous heart. She even made a room. Gumawa po siya ng kwarto pagtutulugan para po kay Elisha every time na darating siya. She is also very humble. Tinanong siya ni Elisha, what can I do for you? Ang sabi niya, you know, I have, I have a home among my people. She's content in her position and her situation. Kahit po siya walang anak. And so God bless her. In verse 17, sinasabi po dyan, siya po'y nagkaanak. Everything was doing well. Everything was great. Until, until a tragedy happened. Her son, the Bible says, tradition says, had a heat stroke and died on her lap in her arms. Her greatest hope and joy was taken away from him. At this point, we could say, this is an opportunity, or somehow she's vulnerable to blame, to sin, to bitterness, or even hatred. But that was not her response. 
In fact, babasahin po natin sa English Standard Version. It says in verse 23, And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, All is well. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there's the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to, to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with the child? And she answered, All is well. All is well, repeated twice with her husband and with Gehazi. I wonder, why would she say all is well when her son, the only son, died? You know why? She knew that her son would resurrect even though he died. She put the boy in the bed where Elisha would sleep and shut the door. This was contrary to their tradition. Pag manamatay, 24 hours dapat po ilibing. No doubt that it's a test of her trust in God. God would push us to the edge, not to hurt us, but to allow us to grow. We need to learn to face our fears, learn to face our pain, our disappointments, so we can grow in our trust. Just like this woman, she went through pain and yet her faith and trust in God helped her overcome the struggle. We can imitate her example as we go through this unknown territory. We too can say, everything is all right. All is well. Ang lahat ay maayos. Maayo ang tanan. Few things I saw that brought her to, to where she, is, she was. Number one, in the midst of chaos, with God, all is well. Her faith and trust in God was evident in the story. She believed without any doubt her son will live. We saw her actions, her desperation, and vulnerability at the same time. Her son came back to life in her arms, again alive and well. Kahit anong pagsubok, kaguluhan, kahirapan, at iba pa ay kaya nating Sabihin na ang lahat ay nasa mabuti kung ang Panginoon ang ating kakapitan at mananalig kay Jesus ng buong buo sa ating mga puso. 2,000 years ago, a somewhat similar story happened. This time, it's about God, Jesus, and us. God the Father gave His Son willingly, although He knew the pain. That he knew that he would go through some struggles and shame and sufferings. That Jesus will go through all these things. Jesus, on the other hand, willingly gave up his son. You know, Jesus willingly gave up his life, rather, on the cross so we can be saved. So we can have peace. So we can have eternal life. The Shunammite son died and resurrected and died again. Jesus died once, resurrected once, and lived forever. So we have something to look forward to in this life and in the life after that. This is where we can depend on this foundation wherein we can say all is well, regardless of any situation. As we take the bread and the wine, let's not forget that Jesus lived and died and resurrected so that we can have peace in our hearts even though we go through the most difficult times, that we can say, all is well. Let's pray for our communion. Our Father God in heaven, thank you so much for this time that you have given to us. As a congregation, as disciples, so we can take the bread and the wine to, be, to remind us of how awesome it is to be Christians. But at the same time, to understand the privilege that you have given to us. Someone died. A holy one died so we can have peace. Jesus died, sacrificed His body, everything, so we can say everything is well. As we take it, Lord, I pray, please help us be reminded of how awesome it is to have a relationship with You and be forgiven from all our sins. We love You, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
great to have our communion. Amen. By the way, the Shunammite woman was part of the heroes of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 35 says, women received back their dead, raised to life again. Her example of faith is worthy of emulation. Let's continue in our story. Let's pick up the story in verses 31 to 37. Basahin po natin. 31 to 37. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff of the boy's face, but there was no sound or response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elijah and told him, The boy has not awakened. When Elijah reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay on the boy mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands, as he stretched himself out on him. The boy's body grew warm. Elijah turned away and walked back and forth in the room, and then got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite, and he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Three people were tested here. The Shunammite woman, Gehazi, although he was obedient, but he couldn't do it. Elisha, the staff, was not enough. It was hidden, you know, from him. In fact, the situation, he had, no, he had no idea what's happening right there. Isn't this familiar to all of us? You have no idea what to do. Maybe you've been an old Christian. Maybe a seasoned leader. You cannot figure it out. There's more testing, more stretching, more guessing. The Bible says in verse 32, When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. When Elisha arrived, what did he do? The Bible says he prayed. Second point, in the midst of confusion, with prayers, all is well. Why was it hidden from him? Why the staff is not enough, nor his presence not enough? You see, the center of the story is not the Shunammite woman, nor the great prophet Elisha. Ang bida po sa kwentong ito ay ang Panginoon. As great and powerful as Elisha was, he needed God's intervention. That is why he shut the door and prayed. The story is a reminder to all of us that we are not in control. We are all in desperate need for God through the good times and the bad times. Let me give you some let me share with you some good news in the Philippine family of churches. With 5,000 disciples in the ICOC Philippines, including the immediate family members, none contracted the virus. Let's continue to pray for that. Continue to pray for the safety of the church as well as the entire country. Some disciples abroad who contracted the virus are recovering well. Let's include them in our prayers. Let's also continue to pray for the frontliners. We have seen around 350 online Bible studies. That's awesome. Let's continue to pray more that their hearts will be open. We have seen changed lives in these difficult times. 50 people were baptized into Christ. Last Sunday, we saw Ken of Las Piñas was restored. Last week, we witnessed the restoration of Evelyn from ICOC Kamanaba. Berlinda from ICOC Manila was baptized. Arlene from ICOC Las Piñas was baptized. Michael from ICOC Laguna was baptized. Bella and her daughter April were baptized from ICOC Cebu and many more different sectors in different and in different churches. In closing, I would like to share with you a letter sent to me from a brother in BBRC in a jail in Cebu City. And I quote, My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord's service, this COVID-19 virus thing virtually tests how much trust in God 
you and I have in stock and how much of it we were willing to invest in faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1. We must wear it in our sleeves. Let it glow in our eyes so that we will be able to inspire and encourage one another. You and I love the Lord. God works for the good of those who love Him. Romans 8.28 we want you to know we are surviving this COVID challenge. We have baptized three more disciples and pushing as many as 15 studies toward baptizing 10 this month of April. The peace of the Lord Christ Jesus and the strength of the Holy Spirit be with you all. End of quote. You know, since the start of Celebrate Recovery Ministry inside the Bagong Buhay Rehabilitation Center in Cebu City Jail, led by Erwin Pia, Kisido, and the team, we have seen eight men baptized last October. Five men baptized last December, and three more were baptized last M March of this year. You know, at this time, we have already 17 disciples in BBRC, and 15 more men wanted to become disciples. This is truly God's work. If there's anyone who can relate more to what a real confinement is, these brothers in the prison, a cell, can tell. They may be locked up for years or maybe for a lifetime, but their spirits are freed by the word of God. Brothers and sisters, our freedom is in Christ alone. Let's continue to pray and, and intercede for people in our country. Let's continue to strengthen each other by prayers. Let's continue to pray for more souls to be saved. Let's continue to pray to heal our land. And let's continue to pray for individual hearts to trust in God in the midst of these trying times. Then and only then we can say, all is well. I love you, church, and to God be the glory. He gave me new birth into living hope and a promise that never can be broken. I when the trials come, when they're there to show, I can overcome, but the faith is sweet and has been refined. All that can be burned has been left behind, so my faith is genuine. My faith has greater worth, greater worth, greater worth. Keep it from me.